Welcome back to another instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week, where in this video I will be talking about the black stills, critically endangered waiting birds that very nearly became extinct and are now on the road to recovery. I hope you enjoy. Black stilts, otherwise known as khaki, are black wading birds that also have long pink legs and a thin black bill, being 40 centimetres in length and around 200 grams in weight, also having distinct red eyes. They are found in braided riverbeds, side streams and swamps, and even on irrigated paddocks if there is good feed available. They frequent open braided rivers and associated wetlands off the Mackenzie Basin where they are often found, favouring shallow waters of invertebrate-rich side streams and pools, and wading out into deeper water if necessary. They are also carnivorous, with birds preying on a range of invertebrates, which includes crustaceans, worms, and occasionally small fish. Breeding-wise, they can form lifelong pairs, reaching breeding age at around 2-3 years of age, collaborating in building a nest in July or August on stable islands or banks in shingle riverbeds, tending to nest in the same sites each year. The female lays between 3-5 to five blotched green eggs that are laid from September to December, with both birds incubating. Chicks hatch after 25 days, and within hours, said newly hatched chicks can hunt for food and even swim if necessary, and can fly at 6 weeks of age, remaining with their parents for a further 6 to 8 months. Outside of the breeding season, most birds move locally within the Mackenzie Basin, and do not generally join the northern migrations of other inland wading birds to warmer areas, instead remaining in said areas, enduring the sometimes below freezing temperatures before breeding begins again in spring. When they are young, juvenile black stilts are yellowish in coloration and by the time of their first winter plumage, then develop a black back and variable dark markings, taking around one to two years for them to appear in their distinctive black plumage. This plumage is theorised to be dominant in being selected through natural selection potentially due to the advantage of being able to absorb heat better in their cold, windswept habitats of colder glacial riverbeds and lake shores, where most other wading birds related to them wouldn't stay for long in. Birds have even been observed standing around in winter with frost and ice on their wings waiting for the sun to rise and melt it, so that they can get going for the day, and considering their small size and the climate they live in, it makes them even more impressive. Birds have however undergone a drastic decline since European arrival, with there being numerous reasons as to why. Once the most common stills of New Zealand, they were once found in a variety of habitats around the country, with subfossil bones indicating that they were found in environments as diverse as narrow bush streams in Hawke's Bay, as well as wetland lakes surrounded by forests in North Canterbury, being found up until the 19th century in fact, in riverbeds and wetlands extending from the central and eastern North Island and most of the South Island aside from Fiordland. They then began to decline during the 20th century, with their range contracting from being South Island wise to being confined to Canterbury and Otago in the 1950s, South Canterbury North Otago by the 70s and the Mackenzie Basin where they still remain by the 1980s, with them no longer breezing in the North Island and being rarely, if ever spotted, outside of the breeding season. The main reason for this decline came with the further introduction of mammalian predators, which are still the greatest threat to their survival, with stoats, ferrets and cats being released to try and control the spread of rabbits, which were reaching plague levels with the onset of expanded agriculture, with hedgehogs also preying on juveniles and their eggs. Black stilts evidently are very vulnerable to these predators, lacking many of the behaviours required to deal with them and generally being naive to their presence until it is too late. They, unlike their close relatives the pied stilts, which will be more relevant later, nest on the banks of streams and rivers rather than islands in said areas, nesting beginning in late winter, a time when rabbit numbers are low and so they become an increasingly likely target for said predators, with the most common food sources down, as well as them also generally nesting in solitary pairs, losing the protection of a colony. Their plumage is also more noticeable, and they are less likely to perform distraction displays while incubating, such as feigning injury to lure potential predators away, with their chicks also taking longer to fledge. Understandable given the lack of pressure on them to do these things before such a sudden change in their environment, both through people and the other mammals that came with them. This led to a large decline in their numbers, with them now being confined breeding-wise to the Mackenzie Basin of South Canterbury and North Otago, in the areas between Lake Tekapo and the Pukaki Basins in the north, and the Ahuriri River in the south. Another threat also presented itself less obviously, that's being in regards to their genetic integrity, as their close relatives, the Pied Stilts, which colonised New Zealand in the early 19th century, 
having now replaced black stilts in much of their former range, also breed with them, losing to hybrid birds that dilute their genes and could lead to the loss of the whole population. Black stilts diverged from pied stilts around 750,000 years ago, with black stilts representing the first colonisation of said birds from Australia, leading to quite a few differences between them. Black stilts are more compact and shorter legs, likely down to their colder environments, and also having a thicker bill, allowing them to be well adapted to their braided river environments. And, unlike their relatives, they are able to exploit prey seeking refuge beneath riverbed stones, and can continue to forage in rivers for long periods whereas pied stilts opt to depart. As being more gracile, they are unable to do so for as long. Pied stilts are however better accustomed to mammalian predation due to their recent arrival, with them nesting in groups and when threatened, as mentioned earlier, will attempt to lead predators away from their nests, whereas black stilts will launch into the air. The endemic birds are however generally more aggressive, often outcompeting pied stilts for feeding areas, and even launching themselves directly at harrier hawks threatening their young, being far more bold, at least to avian predators. Despite them being genetically and behaviourally distinct from their pied relatives, they are still able to breed with and hybridise with them, meaning that pairings between black stilts lessened as pied birds became more common. Hybrid birds are very variable in their plumage, but a key indicator to tell if they are pies or hybrids when they are adults is whether or not they have black breast feathers, which pied stilts never have, with the width and extent being indicative of the amount of black stilt genes present. Identification is however further complicated when they are young, as they are practically identical, and so it can take up to a year to thoroughly assess into breeding events. Birds mate for life unless said partner dies, and so would theoretically be lost to the overall breeding population, and as such, rangers will occasionally euthanise a pine stilt if they are paired up with a black stilt, but only if they are in an area where there are other black stilts that are of the opposite sex so that they can repair. Thankfully, hybridisation is not as big of a threat as was once thought, as through extensive management and identification, young hybrid birds have been found to be unusually pale and their fitness is also reduced. This has big implications, as it suggests the genetic integrity of black stilts continues to be valued over any potential gain in genetic diversity that may be facilitated. This led to a study that assessed said genetic swamping, and it was found that there was in fact minimal introgressive hybridisation in hybrid birds, and that black stilt genes were still dominant if said hybrids were to breed. Genetic markers assessing 63% of the wild population found that there was no introgression aside from one individual that was an outlier, and all remaining birds were assigned as black stilts with over 95% in probability. This indicates that existing microsatellite markers provide a strong genetic integrity among the birds despite their differing appearances, and so this threat is no longer as worrisome as was once thought. Birds are however still vulnerable to potential habitat loss, as degradation from hydroelectric dams, agriculture and invasive weeds like Russell Lupin and Crack Willow are able to colonise braided riverbeds, which reduces nesting habitats and provides cover for predators. Thankfully for the former, a new flow regime in some of these areas reduced encroaching vegetation through increased water flow, allowing for both bird and dam to function well. Off-road vehicles can also drive over riverbeds and threaten their eggs, as well as scaring off birds, and so limits are put in place as to limits or ban driving during nesting season from August to December. Black stilt populations as a whole may have numbered around 500 to 1,000 birds in the 1940s, although this quickly fell, and when intensive management to save them began in 1981, numbers had declined to just 23 adult birds. To mitigate this and to save the population, the Department of Conservation sought to intensively manage the population, and with the chick survival rates at an abysmal 1%, the situation was dire. The service built a compound and collection of aviaries down a hill from the power substation in Twizel to form a breeding programme, with rangers collecting eggs from the wilds to incubate, and since when a breeding pair lose a clutch, laying potentially another three times, doing this was key to boost the population. Birds are housed in said facilities until they are around three to nine months old, with annual releases being conducted, and with their increase in population, the facilities to house them began to run out of space, and so some eggs were transferred to the privately run Isaac Conservation and Wildlife Trust in Christchurch, which houses said eggs and birds until the time of release. Through this work, almost every black stilt roaming the Mackenzie hatched in said facilities, which has most definitely prevented them from going extinct, which would have surely happened by now without said intervention. 
birds are still however one of the rarest in the world, with 169 adults surviving in the wild. As of May 2020, although more are still on their way. The Mackenzie Basin itself is also not necessarily the best place for these birds, as it was simply the last place that black stilts could hold out from introduced predators, so with increased pest control and habitat restoration, they may just be a common sight once again. And with that, I thank you for watching this instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week. For next time, you are now able to vote for the Hawkins Rail, large, recently extinct birds that's had a long, down-curved bill. With that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.